everyone welcome to this updated video this morning i hope that you are enjoying your day thus far so we'll be looking at what is currently going on across the north atlantic basin and as you would have seen from the thumbnail or even the title we're going to be keeping an eye on an area for seeing some level of development as we head into especially next week so closing off july and heading into august we're really going to be seeing things ramping up or at least trying to ramp up in the tropics so you have what appears to be a new tropical wave emerging off of the african coast we can see some convection out there we haven't been seeing a whole lot of this because of the dust intrusions so the Saharan dust is uh, no stranger to the month of july we have these dense plumes continuously moving across the region and uh, uh, they're still out there right now, but we are seeing an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity. Along with that uh, next tropical wave, we do have that surge in moisture headed to the southeastern islands. So the Windward Islands will be experiencing that increase in rainfall starting today and going into tomorrow. So as we head closer to the area here, we can see these uh, showers and thunderstorms that are developing so we're seeing more and more activity as the morning comes on and eventually uh, by the way this is a satellite imagery from earlier so around two to three hours ago but as the day goes on we're going to be seeing this area become a lot more active and maybe by the time you're seeing this it is already raining in your area so let me know in the comments what is going on for you if you're in the lesser antilles with this approaching uh surge in moisture a little trough in the area and then as we head further to the west here we can see that central america remains active nothing unusual and across much of the greater antilles there isn't a whole lot of activity kicking up so the environment is quite stable right now again because of said dust in the area so it has been quite prevalent over the past two weeks or so but things are going to be changing in the very near future and we're going to be seeing that updated graphic from the climate prediction center as we head into later today so that will be uh, incorporated in tomorrow's update video but for now, let's talk about the short-term rainfall forecast from Euro. Again, we're going to have that moisture starting to move in, all that rain and uh, thunderstorm activity as well. So we're, great, uh, we're going to see this general area being more active, the vicinity of Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, heading in, going to Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, maybe a few spots in Grenada, not guaranteed for the entirety of the island. And even parts of northern South America, such as Guyana, the western part of Suriname, going to much of Venezuela and parts of of Colombia, especially near the coast, will likely be active as well. Similar thing for Central America, as we saw, it's already quite active in the area. And then for the Greater Antilles, there could be some showers and thunderstorms, especially as we head into later this afternoon. And then up to the vicinity of uh, Florida, it's been a bit active there as well with some showers and thunderstorms, so some increased rainfall. And uh, for parts of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, we could also see some loitering showers. ABC Allen, similar story. And also also for the northeastern islands such as the virgin islands and the leeward islands may not be very very active but some passing showers are most definitely possible as we head throughout today it is also going to be quite windy it's been windy for many of us so winds are really going to be kicking up again as we head throughout today especially just offshore colombia in the central caribbean but overall for most islands it's going to be breezy winds exceeding 15 20 knots in some spots so that helps out with the heat because i mean it's worse when it's really hot there's no rain and very tranquil the winds aren't picking up so that is just the recipe for feeling as though we're baking so the winds they do help out a lot so it's a perfect time to go to the beach and to cool off and also to enjoy it all before things start to ramp up again because there's no doubt that the caribbean is likely to be at risk with our future systems that will develop because of uh the general expected uh, trajectory due to the more dominant high pressure system out there so again stronger high equals a more westward trek of tropical storms and hurricanes which puts the caribbean at a greater risk of impacts now we are taking a look at this graphic here showing the typical origin uh, origin spots for tropical development in the month of august so we're closing off july we're going to be heading into august nothing is expected for the next seven days but 
this is usually where we want to watch we want to watch the main development region for those tropical waves coming off headed west that may cross into the caribbean some of them will move just north of the region head into the bahamas and the gulf some will move north of the region or head very close and then may curve out and parallel the east coast of the united states so that is typically what we want to watch for in the month of august and of course as i had mentioned with that more dominant high we're going to tend to see more of a westward track towards the caribbean and uh, I mentioned uh, at the start of the video that there is that next tropical wave coming off that we want to watch. So there are some hints of seeing something try to become of it near the Caribbean. Nothing very strong, no strong signals out there, but there are definitely hints. For example, here we are looking at the Euro Ensemble members. The more of these L's we see, these different members, expecting that around this time in this place we may see some sort of development trying to happen. They're not tightly packed right now in one specific area, so they're kind of dispersed and there's not a whole lot of them. And overall, they're not suggesting that there will be a strong system. But we are seeing the hints and this is for next wednesday the 31st of july the last day closing out so that is when we could see that tropical wave move close to the caribbean and may try to get itself together who knows as I said, these are not a very strong signals saying that, yes, we're going to see something really develop, but there are signals nonetheless. And we just got to watch to see if over the next couple of days, we're going to have more models hopping on to that uh, idea that, hey, we could see this tropical wave really try to get itself together. But the battle is going to be fear ahead of it mostly due to that dry air but another thing is that as we get these more robust tropical waves coming off of africa they kind of help out with the dust so they will help to increase the moisture in the atmosphere and pave the way for each other essentially so they'll be creating that more conducive environment as these uh, as these tropical waves get stronger they create a more favorable environment to actually see development take place and then once we start to have development unfolding, it is just not going to get pretty onwards throughout much of August headed to September and even October. We could even see an active November with that La Nina strengthening. So La Nina typically favors a more active hurricane season in the Atlantic. And it's essentially when waters in the equatorial Pacific are cooler than normal. So that affects what happens globally and it favors more development in the Atlantic Basin. So sea surface temperatures are well on their way to support rapid intensification of these uh, systems that will form. And that is going to be a major issue. That's the reason Beryl managed to become such a strong hurricane in a very, very short amount of time. And there's no doubt we could see that recurrence as we head into the coming weeks. But now, as we drift over to our neighboring ocean basin, the Pacific, there are two disturbances being watched for development, both given a 30% chance through the next seven days. So we'll see what become of them, but unlikely that they'll be a problem for anyone. So just so you know that, hey, we could see something happen over there. It's not usually very active over there when... Uh, there is a La Nina. So La Nina usually suppresses activity in the Eastern Pacific while it enhances activity in the Atlantic Basin. So just bring into your attention that, hey, we do have that other ocean basin there as well, but nothing crazy is happening right now. And as for the Atlantic, nothing crazy going on either. However, we could see things resume within a week or two. And... I'm going to be keeping you posted as I always do. So that is basically what I wanted to share with you in this update video this morning. And I do trust and hope you found it to be a very informative video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll get to you once I have the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.